Oh, yes. It's Brady. Caw! And Levi. Levi. Do the bird noise. Caw! Caw! Nerdish. It's Nerdish with a three, not Nerdish with an E. Why? Eight to nine, 30 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yes, because Nerdish with an E was taken. And that's why we do it 8 to 9.30 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thank you for giving that reason for a question that I didn't ask. That's sort of like the way we eliminate answers on the reading section. Yeah, that's true. And I guess the other sections to a certain extent. I think it's important when doing a rap to listen to the beat that's happening in your ear. Otherwise, you have a problem staying on beat. Correct. We do the ACT and SAT, their standardized tests, to help you get into college. We don't tutor rap. We shouldn't ever do that. No, we're not pretending to be tutors of rap, even though we're really good. Sometimes you can be really good at something, but not be a good teacher. Case in point. Point in case. Point in case word. Point in case something bad happens. Like this? Yes. I think we're enriching your lives by you watching this. I'm getting a phone call from a friend. Do you think I should take it up now? The phone call just was dropped. Maybe he'll leave you a voicemail. Next time, I'll pick it up during the stream. That way, we can all talk to my friend Steve. If you think this is not very high quality, don't worry. We're going to do it again in two weeks. Also, we're much better quality when we're teaching you all the things in a number tree. Like prime factorization? Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. You break a number down into its prime parts until you can't break it down anymore. We should probably do that right now. Yeah, yeah we might. Okay, okay, so let's say 32. I was going to say 30. That's so close. Oh, my gosh. All right, break it up. Break it up. Okay, Any way okay. you want. 2 okay, and 16. Okay, okay, 2 and 16. 2 and 16. 16 yeah. is 4 and 4. Okay, 4 and 4. Oh, and interesting. Each so 4 is, is 2, square. 2. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, 2 and 2 and 2 and 2. So it's 2 to the 5th. Yeah, it's uh, 2 to the 5th. 2 to the 5th, exactly. Whoa. Yes. That's pretty cool. You see that? It's that quick. Now you know. Think about that for our whole show. Now stop watching the stream because you've learned everything necessary. We're in a box. You can help us by asking us questions in the hope that someday we can escape. My master Sauron the Great bids thee welcome. All right, we're doing nerdish tonight. <laughs> You're blushing. No, I never blush. It's against my genetic programming to not blush. I mean, to, I am to blush. genetically programmed to call you by your. What is it? I'm genetically programmed to not use your first, like not call you by your first name or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't oh, hey, matter. Stream Elements, how are you? Oh, yes, we are live, and I we're just it. chatting about the SAT slash ACT prep upright slash what is that called? <laughs> so CP Turtle, that's actually something that we do to each other a lot. <laughs> we talk that way. Yeah. Um, so this is the first time we decided to do it for you guys. Also, we lie a great deal. That's not a lie. We do that all the time. We really do. It's from it's a deleted scene from The Return of the King <laughs> called The Mouth of Sauron. And if you haven't seen it, it's ridiculous. And I actually thought it was pretty cool until Brady told me it was ridiculous. And now I just feel bad about myself. What, what the thing that we did or like that no, scene? No, that scene. I what? think it's really cool. It's it absurd. Scary. Hey, Uncle Bill is here. Hey, Uncle Bill, go deep. <laughs> Uncle Bill just got a knee replacement. Really? Yeah. yeah. Don't go deep. <laughs> Let the ball soar over your head. Don't put too much pressure on your knee. Uh, How do you know about the knee replacement? Did he tell you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I heard it. Uh oh. Yeah. So, sure. Will you stop? You keep moving. What? Can you just stop moving? Yeah. Jeez. Okay. CB2. Oh, what are we doing today? What Back. are we doing today? Back. It's right there! Hmm. Yeah, Stream Elements, tell me what I just wrote. Stop. Stop. Great. <laughs> Dude, sorry. Sorry, you guys you probably... It. I didn't do it. We're so sorry. We're so, so sorry. All right, leave. Stop. <laughs> None of that. Are you, are you gone? 
What do you mean, am I gone? Am I just taking this now? No, no, no. See, but Harold, do you have questions? You know the reliability of gossip, right? I have heard a great deal about the reliability of gossip from my friend Brady. I heard from the mouth of Sauron. <laughs> a huge gossip. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't supposed to tell them that his master, Sauron the Great, bids thee welcome, but he gossiped Sauron was it. so embarrassed. He was. He was. <laughs> Don't actually tell them. <laughs> oh, God. That'd be absurd. Anyway, um, we're going to do factory polynomials today, and we're going to hand it to Leeward. Um, nope, I did just finish the English. No, five points. Hey! Five points is very significant. Especially That's very good. It's on the ACT, not the SAT. Good. Levi, I'm thinking of a song. Uh, Flubber by Wa Robin Williams. No. no Robin no, no, Williams. Robin Williams. It's, there's a different one. It yes. starts... Da -da 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 -da. Drums, drums, drums. Da -da 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 the Star Spangled National da -da 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 Anthem. Oh, CB Turtle. <laughs> walking down the street, CB Turtle. The kind I'd like to take that. I want to do this. You need to teach you them. You always help me with that. Teach them that. I don't have to. Yes, I want to. I want to, which is why I'm going to do it. All right, I got some examples on my phone. Let's start with simple quadratic factoring. Okay? Simple quadratic factoring. It's simple. Don't worry about it. X squared. Let me think about this. Yes. Plus 11x plus 30. All right? We want to factor that. Here is what I have always done. You might do it differently. That's okay. Just change to what I do now. It's easy. Now, if it works for you, keep doing your own thing. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to this number right here. So I write M30, and they add to the middle number, which is 11. Okay? Why not three below? Absolutely. All right. So we're going to put them in these factors, starting with X and X. These two numbers that do this. I already know what they are because I, I made this, um, but if I didn't know what they are, I would think, okay, what factors are there of 30? What pairs do they come in? Three below it. No. Yes, I, below. I, no. Okay. I know that there's one and 30. I know that there's two and 15. I know that there's three, three and 10. I know. I know. I don't know if you knew that. I know that there's five and six, and then we get to six and five, and it's okay. Those are our four factor pairs. Do any of those add up to 11? Yes, they do. Five and six. Therefore, our factors are x plus 5, x plus 6. All right? Not too bad. What are you writing? A reverse foil. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's a good idea. Let's just quickly foil this just to make sure we got it right. Just to make sure. So, foil. I'm going to write that up here. We have first, outer, inner, as the British say, lost. They say that. Lost. You know, it was great. There was this girl I knew that I took a comedy class with, and she said that she was performing at what I call the Laugh Factory, and she called it the Laugh Factory, which I thought was beautiful. <laughs> the Laugh Factory. <laughs> anyway, all right. It's a good thing that we got our independence from them. X times X, that's our first, our first two terms. That's going to be X squared. Then we go inner. Now, the, I mean, sorry, outer. The, the order that we do this doesn't matter as long as we take care of all of them, but whatever. Okay, outer, we have X and 6. That's going to be 6X. Inner, we have 5 and X, which is going to be 5X. And then lastly, we have the last. So that is 5 and 6, which is going to be 30. So if we add all these terms up x squared plus, both of these are like terms, so we can add them, plus 11x plus 30, which is what we started with. That's excellent. That means we did it right. It's very exciting. Very exciting. Let's do another one. I'm going to do it right here. Here we go. x squared. Let me think about this for a sec. Yes. Plus 12x minus 28. No, I'm not going to set it up as an equation, just as an expression. Yes, x squared plus 12x minus 28. So, like I did before, we want to multiply to this number here, which is a negative 28, mind you. We're going to add to positive 12. All right? So think about we're multiplying two numbers together, and we get a negative number out of it. There's only one way that can happen. One of the numbers is positive, one of the numbers is negative. If they were both negative, they'd multiply together to make a positive. If they were both positive, they'd multiply together to make a positive. So there has to be a negative and a positive number. 
So I'm just going to start off with this. This. Gee, this. X plus something, X minus something. Okay? So this is a 28. Doesn't look that great. Factors of 28. I'm not going to worry about the negative for right now. I'm just thinking about the number 28 itself. What are the factors? I have 1 and 28. I have 2 and 14. 3 does not go into it. 4 goes in 7 times. 5 and 6 don't go into it. So we're done right there. Okay? Now think about making these pairs, making one of the numbers in these pairs negative. Is there a way to do that such that you would get positive 12 if you added them together? The answer to that is yes. You'd have to use 2 and 14. You'd have to have a negative 2. Negative 2 times 14 is going to give you a negative 28, and they're going to add together to make positive 12. So that's what we want to do here. We're going to have x minus 2 and x plus 14. All right? So far, you guys are doing incredibly well. I'm very impressed. All right. Um, I'm going to move over here now. These ones were relatively straightforward because the leading coefficient was 1. What's in front of the x squared in both of these, you don't see anything because it's 1. That's nice. When it's not 1, things get a little more hairy, a lot more hair involved. Let me show you. 6x squared plus x minus 2. Our leading coefficient is now 6. How does this change things? Well, it changes things. It definitely changes things. You probably, have, was, you probably were taught some method of guess and check where it's like, well, I know the first terms are either going to be 6x times x. That'll give us 6x squared. Or maybe they're going to be 3x times 2x. All right? Yeah, okay, start trying things out. It's going to take a little bit. You might get to it quickly. You might not, okay? I will show you a method of doing this that will get you straight to the right answer after some steps. That's not guess and check. So... Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Let's let that dry. You gotta let it dry. If you don't let it dry, you can't factor, okay? Try factoring something wet. Try it, it's not gonna work. Things that are wet are not factorable. Except for three, my lord. Except for three, yes, thank you. And very large triangles, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. Yes, don't really go out. I don't know. You should say. Okay. Also, tell CB Turtle thank you. Just say thank you, CB Turtle. Thank you, CB Turtle. Why? CB Turtle has just posted seven English questions that are all beautiful. Oh, I love that. I love that. All right, so we're going to start off very similarly with an M and an A. But this is going to work a little differently. The number that we're looking for... The two numbers we're looking for do not multiply together to create negative 2. They multiply together to create the product of this number and this number. Well, that's, that's supposed to be a 6, okay? They multiply together to make the product of negative 2 and 6, which is negative 12. All right? Now, I'm about to blow your mind. You were actually doing this before, but you didn't even know it because the leading coefficient was 1. So 30 times 1 just gave you 30. Negative 28 times 1 just gave you negative 28. But now that we have a leading coefficient that's not 1, there's a little more hair involved. Let's just say that. They add a negative 12. The addition is the same as before, so we're adding to a positive 1 right there. Great. So what numbers do that? Well, they're going to be 1 apart from each other. One of them is going to be negative, one of them is going to be positive. They're going to be positive 4 and negative 3. Okay? Four and negative three. Now, before you jump to parentheses, I know you want to do that and start putting these things into factors. You can't do that yet because it will not clear up what's going to happen with the six. Here's what you want to do. You want to, and what we're doing, by the way, is, is going to be called factor by grouping, and, and I'll show you why that is. You're going to want to split that middle term into two different terms with these as coefficients. What do I mean by that? Six x squared stays the same, but now instead of writing plus one x, we're going to write plus 4x minus 3x minus 2. So plus 1x turned into plus 4x minus 3x, which, while in the chess lesson on here, tell me when you will answer my questions for stream. Um, Ace chess? Ace chess is, I assume, commemorative. Are you commemorative? Was it 3,000? Yeah, 100, 100, 100. 
Commemorative 100. Is that you, Ace Chess? Okay, so plus 4x minus 3x will give you plus 1x. We didn't actually change the value. Yes, it is. What do I say? Uh, I'll answer this real quick. Levi's coming up. Hey, so uh, I'll call you Ace. Um, Ace. Uh, the questions you sent me in the DMs were, ideally the questions should be in the questions for stream channel, um, and we don't answer non-SAT, ACT related questions, so they, you sent me a bunch of grammar questions, but some of them seem to be just like open-ended, like write this dialogue thing, and you know, we're not going to do that, but there, you know, a couple of them are grammar related, and we'll hit those for sure. Um, so, Bird, how, how long are you going to be doing this for? Yes, a little bit long, while longer. Okay, Yeah. a couple hours. Yeah, a couple hours. Days, weeks, months, days, days two, decades, uh, millennia, millennia, eons. Eons. Universal ages. I don't minutes? Know what that is. Okay, minutes. cool. Great. Split them up. I didn't answer your question. Split them up. 20 minutes. Split them up. Now we're going to do factor by grouping. We group them by cutting down right through the middle. All right, you don't have to draw that, but I like it because it, it, I like it, okay? Look at the first half. 6x squared plus 4x. Just factor that as much as you can. Is there anything you can take out of both of those? Yes, there is 2x. I can pull a 2x out of both of them. So we're going to have 2x, and in parentheses, I'm going to have 3x plus 2. Because that would give us 6x squared plus 4x. Great. This one here, I cannot pull anything out of that because there's nothing that negative 3x and negative 2 have in common except for negative 1. And now I actually really do have to pull out negative 1 because... When you're factoring by grouping, the only way it's going to work is if you're able to pull out the same factor on both sides. Okay? We have to pull out 3x plus 2. If we don't, factor by grouping is not going to work. And there's going to be times where it doesn't work, so you just can't use it. But in this case, it will work. Okay? 3x plus 2 should be in both of these. And the way to make 3x plus 2 on this side equivalent to what we had before, which is minus 3x minus 2, is to have a negative 1 in front of it. Okay? So, here's where you end. You take the things that are in front of both sets of parentheses, which we have 2x here, we have minus 1, and you group them together. 2x minus 1, and then the other factor you already found, which is 3x plus 2. And that's going to be your factorization. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to do another one before we clear the board. I'm going to put it over here. All right. Big time. Big, but big, but big, big time. So, 5p squared minus p minus 18. And I've never done this one before, so let's do it together, because I don't know it. So, we're going to multiply to negative, let's see, 50 plus what, negative 90. We're going to add to negative 1. All right. 9 and 10. It's going to have to be negative 10 and positive 9. Those would add up to negative 1 and multiply together to negative 90. Okay, good. So this is one where the leading coefficient is not 1, so I'm going to have to do factor by grouping. So I'm going to have to split apart this middle term. That's my first step. Now, you might be wondering, is there a specific order I have to split them apart in? Is it going to be negative 10 and positive 9? It could be the other way around. It's not going to change our final answer. What it's going to change is what you get in this factor here. You're just going to get the other factor. Don't worry about it. Just, just whatever order you're, you're feeling that day, go for it. 5p squared minus 10p plus 9p minus 18. Split it down the middle. We're grouping them. So I can take a 5p out of both of these. I'm going to get p minus 2. I can take out a 9 from both of these and get p minus 2. And I'm going to want to add this to make it equivalent to what we had before. So what I have is 5p plus 9, because that's what's in front, times p minus 2. Levi, what time is it? Uh, 8.17 oh. Eastern Standard. Um, on April... April what? April 9th? April 9th. CB turtle stands for college board turtle. Maybe. Can't be anything else. April 19th, 2019. April 9th. April 9th, 2019, Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. It always sounds like it's this year that's the year of our Lord. 
right? 2019, the year of our Lord. Like, no, the year of the Lord is, you know, the year of the Lord, which is back in the day. And this is specifically if, if, if you are a follower of Christianity. Um, you know, it's like, since the year of our Lord, maybe. Right? Yeah. I think it's good if we bring religion into this. Yeah. Um, Religion's all right. on the SAT. Yes, it is. The religion subject test. They ask you. No, they just ask you what religion you are. They really do, though. Don't they? No, dude. They ask you I, some I, other demographic questions. I'm pretty sure it's illegal. Okay. I actually don't. Like, when you're applying to college, they ask you stuff like that. Do they? Yeah. They ask you ethnicity. I, I don't think they ask you... I mean, I think it's optional if you want to write your religion or not. I don't know. You think I know? If I knew, I'd, I'd say things like I knew them. Okay. I still see that five. All right. Please tell me which questions can be answered from the questions I sent to you, just so I know. Question for you, Levi. Uh, I'll have to look through. Fortnite is kind of hard. Levi is going to look through the questions. We appreciate you sending the questions out. Hmm. It's very satisfying. Start over here, actually. All right, Levi, I'm going to factor a big polynomial, and then I'm going to give it to you. How does that sound? Yes. Very good. Hey, it's Eric TLT. Eric. Eric, we were just talking about you. Don't worry, only good things. But it's opposite day, so we weren't actually talking about you. But if we were, they would be bad, they would be bad things. Yes. You know, there's no actual way to tell someone it's opposite day. You know that? Because if it is opposite day, you'd have to say, hey, it's not opposite day. But then they wouldn't know it's opposite day. They'd think that you're telling the truth, that it's not opposite day. But if it is, if it's not opposite day, then you tell someone that it's not opposite day. So either way, you're saying it's not opposite day. Although I guess you'd only really bring it up if it was, in fact, opposite day. Unless someone asked you, hey, is it opposite day? In which case, if it was, you'd say, no, it's not opposite day. But they wouldn't know if it was the truth or not because they brought it up. However, if you bring it up and say it's not opposite day, I think they'd probably use context clues to realize it probably is opposite day. Otherwise, why would he or she bring it up? Hmm. Okay. Um, let me get a polynomial factor. It's going to be a big one. You guys got to get ready for this thing. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Red word. Da, da. Oh, this is a good one. Liking the look of this. Hey oh. Alright. Ugh, I'm not liking the look of that marker. Eh, no. Maybe yeah, like this marker isn't that bad, but it maybe I have to press harder. I'm already having trouble on the math problems on your practice SAT. Hey, ask us some questions about them. I'm gonna use a different marker. That's what we have it there. You're in the right place if you are having some trouble on them. We seek to eliminate. That's why we're called Nerdish. Hey Eric, is that the, the SAT2 that we have linked down below or SAT1 that's on the nerdish.com website? Good question. Yeah, Eric, I don't know if you heard Levi, but he's wondering, is it the one that's below on this page, or is it the one on our Nerdish Diagnostic website? Yeah, and Eric, I don't know if you heard him or me from earlier, but are you talking about the SAT that's linked down below, or the one on our Nerdish.com website? Eric, I'm not sure if you heard Levi or me I or think he Levi. Heard, he heard me. He heard me. Yeah, he heard me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it my turn? No. Nerdish website. Great. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, the math is hard. But... I'd rec I mean, if you know that, like, you just look at the math and you go, I have no idea what's going on, then, yeah, the diagnostic for the math probably won't help you too much because if you're just guessing on half of them, then you're going to have to do a, do a bunch of uh, basic stuff. Uh, but if it's towards the end, then finish out the test before asking us about those questions. I did not hear which ones could be answered. Uh, yes, 
So I just, I would say um, three of them are relatable to the SAT and ACT. Right, you want us to type it in the chat. Okay, I'll type it in the chat. Okay, polynomial here. The very first question you should ask yourself whenever you're factoring anything is, is there something that I can pull out of all of the terms? Because if so, you want to do that first, all right? So 28, 16, negative 80, and we got some n's in here. So what do we have in common with all these? Well, I know these are all even numbers, so I know I can pull out a 2. I'm going to start with that. I'm going to pull out a 2, and then also, n squared is the smallest n term. They only get bigger from there. So I know I can pull out an n squared. Here we go. OK, so I pull that out. I'm going to have, so divided by 2, this is going to become 14n uh, squared plus, and divide by 2, that's 8n, and then minus 40. That's it. OK, let me think about this. 16 divided by 2, yes, yeah. OK, good. Can I continue? Yes, I can. Turns out I can divide even more. I, these are still divisible by 2. I will pull out another 2, which is going to make the front number 4. 4n four squared times 7n squared plus 4n minus 10. No, 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 no. Sorry. Minus 20. Very good. Very good. All right, so now the front... We've taken out the greatest common factor. Now we've got this quadratic on the inside. Let's see if we can factor that. So they're going to have to multiply to negative 140, because that's the product of this number and that number. And they're going to have to add to positive 4. OK, so that's going to be positive 14 and negative 10. So I'm going to remember that 4n squared is at the beginning. But for now, I'm going to focus on this stuff here. Split this apart into 14n and negative 10n. 7n squared plus minus 10n minus 20. Pull out a 7n. This is going to be n plus 2. This should also be n plus 2. It needs to be. If it can't, we can't do this. And it's going to be minus 10 in front to make this equivalent. OK, Eric, x minus 10x plus 14. Well, those are the first, those are the two numbers we need, but those factors actually aren't correct because we have a, uh, we have a, a leading coefficient that is not 1, it's 7. So if you multiply those two things together, you're just going to get x squared at the beginning. We want 7x squared. So there's a little bit more work to do. All right, now I'm going to take the two numbers out front, which are 7n and negative 10. They're going to be in their own factor, and then this will be n plus 2 right here. So... 4n squared times 7n minus 10 times n plus 2 will be the factored form. Eric, you kind of showed up to the stream a little late. You're not in trouble. Don't worry. Even if you were, we'd have no way to discipline you. Um, watch the beginning of the stream after this is over because then you'll see if, if factoring by grouping is not something you've seen before, then I'll explain it and you'll be able to figure that out. All right, Levi, I'm now done. Very good. Very good. Hey, Ace, um, I'll answer your questions real quick right now if you're on and you can hear us. If you can't hear us, I'm not going to answer the questions until you're here. So if that's going to be at 9 p.m., then just let us know when you can actually listen and pay full attention. Did you um, message? Huh? Did you message? I, I said the number of things. No, no said Bird is not leaving. 9 p.m. Okay, yeah, just, uh, just check back in at, at 9 p.m. and then we'll get to them. Okay, we have so many questions. Wait, sorry. What is the English that I'm doing today? Oh, yes, direction questions. Eric, so, I'm not leaving. I'll be around. Like, I'm, I'm off screen. Um, so I'll come back on again. So, yeah, you can ask questions still. Okay. Um, I don't really feel like doing what I planned because CB Turtle asked a bunch of good questions. And then yeah, let's do um, them. Eric has some math questions. Okay. CB Turtle. Wait, CB Turtle, say hello. Wave your shell. Hoof? What? They don't have hooves. Yeah, they have hooves. They don't have hooves. No, they put horseshoes on them. What's a cloven hoof? It's like a horseshoe kind of thing. No, it's like a horse shape. Donkeys have it. Hello. Very good. What am I doing? I am getting... Hey, can you get my charger? 
my computer charger. Where is it? Uh, upstairs? Yeah. In my bag. Oh, it's in your bag? Yeah, you're in my bag. Yeah, but upstairs. Okay. In my bag. The bag is upstairs, as is yes, my charger. Yes, I understand. Um, yeah. You're my favorite partner. Very good. Okay. Let's do... Okay, CB Turtle, do you have any preference on these guys? This is going to be so much fun. I'm excited about this. <clears throat> okay. Oy. Your very first question. We have, at that moment, the iguana. At that moment, the iguana opened its eyes, which shone large and bright. Uh, okay. Well, this one is large and bright. So the, the, you have a bunch of non-essentials here. You, you're clearly dealing with commas in this question. Also, uh, Eric, T -I -T -L -T? TLT, right? It sounds like you're a, you're a sandwich. Like it's a BLT, but it's an Eric TLT. That's what I'm thinking. That's definitely not what you decided when you made that name, I would assume. Um, <clears throat> so with this one, you're dealing with commas. We need to figure out what these commas are used for. Not necessarily because it'll help us yeah, oh good. Um, can you just hold that there? Great. <clears throat> I'll plug it in to yourself and then hold it. Don't put any of it in your mouth or near anything. Plug it in, plug it in, when no one is around you. Say baby I love you if you ain't playing games. Plug it in, plug it in. Lovely. So, we have... <laughs> Where do I Great, go? Good. So, um, Eric, if you, you, you see where these questions are, so this is the very first one that uh, CB Turtle posted. We have a bunch of commas. We need to identify what they are. We have the four types and we need to go through that list of them. So we have one listing and two, we have comma fanboys, which you know, right? And number three is DC comma IC and number four is non-essentials. Number four is going to be the most common and it is what's going on in this question. So we have at that moment, Let's just get rid of it because it's not helping us understand what's going on. And then we have the iguana opened its, the iguana slowly opened its eyes. Then we have a comma. Okay, so it's not a listing comma because it's not opening its eyes, shoulders, knees, and toes or something like that. So it's not a listing comma. It could be comma fanboys. You think it's J. Okay, good. Um, maybe. Yeah, so we have this that opened its, shouldn't be doing this in cut, its eyes. This is our non-essential, sorry, this is our independent clause. And then we, we might have, and then we do have a comma. And then we have this other stuff, which shone large and bright from its scaly face. Yes, you're right, it should be J, because the rest of the sentence is just a non-essential, it's actually, um, Ace chess, if you're still watching, this is the, the absolute phrase. Um, maybe it's not technically an absolute phrase, but it's a non-essential for sure. We're in a positive. It's The whole thing is describing eyes, which shone large and bright from its scaly face. All of that is the non-essential, making this, this comma goes for this non-essential. So that's all non-essential, which we have. Then we have the independent clause, and then we have this comma. There's not a second comma. If you make a second comma, that means that between them is that non-essential which is not the situation here. If you pick, um, let's say H, we, we have, uh, uh, which shone large and bright from its scaly face, and then you would take out which shone large and you just have and bright from its scaly face, which doesn't make any sense. So identify what your commas are doing. That's the approach for these, okay? You, you are, can the one comma not do the start while the other is doing the end? Can one comma not do the start while the other is doing the end? I'm not entirely sure what you mean, but if you have, you know, you have your sentence and there are commas in different places. You have a period here, you have a comma here, you have a comma here, and you have a comma here. You need to use context to figure out where, so let's say they're all non-essential commas. So we've gone through the other parts, none of this is happening, so we know these are for non-essentials. Feasibly, you could have your independent clause here and here, this is an internal non-essential offset by these two commas, and then this is a last non-essential because we, we end the sentence. 
or we could have this is the non-essential and then we have nested, sorry, this is the independent clause and then this is nested non-essentials. Like how the first one says that the front can be removed, can another comma also be used to show that the end can be removed? Yes, so that's actually, J is that. At that moment, the iguana opened its eyes, which shone large and bright from its scaly face. That entire thing is a non-essential. This comma shows that. I hope I'm, I, I may not be answering your question correctly. I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. But you either have your independent clause and then an internal non-essential, or you could have an independent clause with a non-essential at the end, or you could have um, a non-essential starting with an independent clause here. Now, these are all the options, but you can put them together. So you can have independent clause with a non-essential starting, and then you have a non-essential in the middle, and then you, fin then you continue your independent clause here, and then you have another non-essential at the end. So I'll give you an example of this. Then why not F? J has no ending comma. So F. Yeah, so you don't have to have an ending comma for a non-essential. What the ending comma means is that, so you're, you're only, you don't think about it from the perspective of the commas necessarily. You're given commas, so you have to think, okay, well that is, a, we have to figure out where the non-essentials would be in that case. But in the context of the sentence, you want to start with your independent clause. The iguana opened its eyes. That's your independent clause. Everything else is extra, it's non-essential. So you have to figure out where you want those commas. In F, we have uh, which shown large and bright, which is great. That, that does sound like a non-essential, right? But then there's more words. There are more words. And if you say from its scaly face, so I'll just, I'll write this one out. Um, we have that. Let's get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of the blue because it's just confusing. Okay. The iguana opened its eyes which shown large and bright from its scaly face. Okay, so we have a comma here that's, that's given, and we have this comma. So we know this is the non-essential, so that's why I crossed that out at the beginning. The iguana opened its eyes, right? That's, sorry, until there, I shouldn't use my finger for this. That's our independent clause here. Bah. That's where the comma is. Which shone large and bright from its scaly face. If you want to put another comma here, that sounds pretty good as you, as you start. At that moment, non-essential, the iguana opened its eyes which shown large and bright from its scaly face. But with non-essentials, you can take them out, right? So if we take out this non-essential here, then we have, then we're basically saying that this is still your independent clause. The iguana opened its eyes from its scaly face. That doesn't really make sense, right? Why would you open your eyes from your face? That, that, that is, Contextually, doesn't make sense to me. You would say, uh, you know, the eyes shone, you're basically saying the eyes shone large and bright from its scaly face. They're shining from the face. So you want this whole phrase here all the way to the end to be a non-essential as one big piece. Does that answer your question, CB Turtle, or did that make it much worse? Yes, good, okay. Um, yeah, no, no, of course, of course. Um, <clears throat> so something like this, this can happen. You can also have multiple non-essentials. There's, there's so much that you can say. <clears throat> um, we could say, you know, we, we could add another non-essential here, uh, which, 
sat atop its head. So now we're, we're kind of stacking these non-essentials. The iguana opened its eyes, which shone large and bright from its scaly face, which sat atop its head. So now we're using this as a non-essential that describes face, but we're using this whole thing as a non-essential that describes eyes, which is part of the independent clause. So you can, you can put bunch of, like tons and tons of non-essentials in a sentence. So you have to be aware of that. That's why generally you want to, don't search out your non-essentials, search out your independent clause or independent clauses, because the subject and verb will help. That said, a subject and verb don't always mean independent clause. You could have a dependent clause. You could also have um, you know, other types of subordinating clauses, but try to find that active verb and its subject that does its thing, and then that's the kernel of the sentence. Okay, let's do the next one. Bert, are you still here? Yes. Very nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I feel good about it too. Do you? Yes. That might be a terrible choice. Okay. Oh. The need for Foley arises from, from the sound clutter of real life. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so this one, CB Turtle, what is the, in, in the second question that you asked, what is the hold up exactly for you? I'm not sure what your answer was, and you said you, you just, on these you're not entirely sure of the answers. Um, what, what is the answer that you put, and were you wrong? Also, looking at the answer choices is, is a good place to start. So at first, you might think that you're dealing with tense, right? Because you just have a verb every time. And we have arouse. OK, so I'll just write these. We have arises from. I put G and got confused or passed on past or present tense. Right, OK. so. That, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. So aroused from, arises, and arise. Aroused from, arises, and arise. And now that word is stopping looking like a word. Okay. So something, something, something. The sound clutter of real life. So this stuff all the sound clutter of life. And then this thing. So we're choosing one of those four to stick in this part of the sentence, yeah? All right, aroused is not a verb. That's the problem here. So I, looking at this, you think, okay, I'm dealing with verb tenses. You're actually not dealing with verb tenses at all because aroused is not a verb. It is an adjective and it me it's like um you know somebody gets aroused. That's it's an adjective. And it, it does not mean so arise means to you know rise up, right? Yeah, foley is a name. So you don't have to worry about that. Holy technique, yeah. So you put G because you thought it was past tense. Um, there is no tense involved here. There's a preposition stuff, you know, do you want to say arises from or arises? You want to say arises from something. Um, so you, you have that side of it. Do you understand, did I explain well enough the difference between aroused and arises? This is, you know, arise is a verb. And that's, you know, you're getting out of bed in the morning. And oh God, I'm trying really hard to explain arouse without going down some, you know, inappropriate. You wake up or something. Aroused? He was aroused from slumber. Yeah. That yeah. works. Okay, okay. So I lied. I guess. 
people are aroused. You don't arouse from the sound of the sound clutter of real life, if, if that makes sense. You think F. Yes, F is the correct answer. You want to, you want, the, this thing arises from the sound clutter of real life. Aroused from is, is, uh, I don't have a bunch of, is this just all in one thing or no? What? No, it's not. Okay, so there's not a bunch of stuff around here, but my guess is that the rest of it should is in present tense. I just don't have the context around it because of the, the screenshot you took. But should be arises from. It's good that you didn't think it was one of these two because that doesn't use the correct preposition. And this is the wrong... This is um, for plural. And that's no good anyway because we have foley, which is a singular noun. Singular subject more specifically. Okay, did a bad job explaining that question. I apologize. You didn't know. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna guess that the third one that you put, you circled the wrong question that you wanted done and then you crossed out all of that. So you want me to do 46, which is the dishes and her face stuff. Hey, chess guy. Hey, um, that's interesting. So there's ace chess and there's chess key or chess guy or chess key. I don't know. Very good. Okay, so this one. We are dealing with chess key. Would you pronounce, pronounce chess key or chess guy or chess guy or chess? Maybe chess? Chess is probably easier. Um, I feel like I'm holding a baby. Anyway, we have, we're, we're looking at the answer choices here first to see what we're being tested on. That will allow us to point our gut feeling at the right thing and our knowledge of the rules, okay? So looking at G, H, and J, which are just, before you even look at the passage, we have, and her face is, we have a comma, her face is, we have comma, her face. So same information, but we're losing parts of speech, right? The word and is in G. And then we have a comma in H and J. So we're going to be dealing with commas, probably sentence structure because we added in a word that, that's an important part of speech. One of them doesn't have is, so that's also an important part of speech because it's a verb. Um, and then in F, we have a semicolon, which makes it even more obvious that we're dealing with sentence structure and independent clauses because semicolons have a rule. Now, we want to start with F. That's where we're going to look first because that has a rule, right? Independent clause, independent clause. Let's see if that works. We have... Oh boy. Um, in her lab at Princeton University, molecular biologist Bonnie Basler, Basler leans over a collection of petri dishes. Yes, this lady leans over a collection of petri dishes. Independent clause. Good. And then we have her, her face illuminated by, aqua by an aquamarine glow. No. That is not an independent clause, so F is not the correct answer. Just because you have a subject, so subject and verb, yes, but there are tricky things like this one that don't quite fit. We have her face, blast, her face illuminated. Now, if we say her face illuminated the room, Great, her face illuminated the room. Subject, verb, she illuminated, her face illuminated the room. She has, a, she has a, a lovely face, a lovely smile. She lights up the whole room, right? You've heard that term before. Now, her face illuminated by an aquamarine, shouldn't have written all of this, glow. I'm not a fan of that because now, Illuminated by an aquamarine glow becomes, an, becomes a description. There's no active verb. Her face illuminated by an aquamarine glow. If you wanted this to be an independent clause, you would need to add the word was. Her face was illuminated by an aquamarine glow. Does that make sense? Because illuminated is past tense, and you can say something like, her face illuminated the room. But that means that the face is doing the illuminating. 
if we're saying that the aqua, aquamarine glow, this glow is illuminating her face, now this is not face's verb. Does that make sense? So this is not an independent clause going down to here. That's, a, that's um, just a whole description. It's, it's a different type of phrase, and I don't, want, I don't like talking about anything aside from independent clauses, mainly because there's no point in learning that stuff. There is, but it's just so messy. There's no point in getting too much into the weeds. Does that idea make sense why F is wrong? You have independent clause and you have something that's not that. So F is no good. And then we have G. So now we're, we're in the business of knowing that everything before Petri dish, or Petri, up until Petri dishes, we have an independent clause. So that's good. So we have an independent clause. And then in G, we have and. So we're staying away from commas because commas are scary, right? There are too many uses. Um, but the next one, we have and. And then we, so we, so we have independent, I'll do it here. Independent clause and her face is. So this is what I was saying before. Now we've added in this word is. We've created another independent clause. Her face is illuminated by an, by an aquamarine glow. Subject verb is is. So now we have independent clause, independent clause, separated by just and. That's not good enough because we need comma fanboys to separate two independent clauses, not just a fanboy, okay? So G is wrong because and isn't good enough. You would need a comma and, which we don't have. So that should actually get us ready for the next two as well, because H is sort of like this one, except now we just have a comma, we don't have and. So we have independent clause, comma, independent clause. That's a comma splice. Also no good. H is out, which means J is probably the right answer. Let's look at that one. Uh, so we have independent clause. Great. And then we have nothing here. So we have independent clause, her face illuminated by an aquamarine glow. That is correct. How do I factor this? Brendan... Is it Brendan? It is Brendan. He's on YouTube. Our first YouTube viewer ever. Hey, so for those of you in Twitch, uh, Brendan is, is on YouTube watching us, but you can't. We can see the, all the chats coming in from different places, but mainly it's Twitch normally. But there we go, Brendan. Brendan, put your hands up. Do it. We'll know. We'll know. Okay. J is correct. We have independent clause, and then a non-essential, okay? We have, I'm gonna read this out loud, maybe. In her lab at Princeton University, comma, so that's a non-essential. In her lab at Princeton University, molecular biologist Bonnie Bassler leans over a collection of Petri dishes, her face illuminated by an aquamarine glow. That's actually kind of a delightful sentence, in my opinion. Uh, it sounds sort of nice and maybe a little bit spooky, her face illuminated by whatever. That's, it's not an independent clause because you don't have an active verb. Does this explanation of this question make sense? I thought you said it can't be her face illuminated. Okay, so it can be, but not when we had a semicolon because the semicolon requires two independent clauses. So when we had, so F, and J are the same, so this is not happening anymore, right? It's just this, but F had a semicolon. That's independent clause, independent clause, but we don't have an independent clause here. So when we make this a comma, it's clearly not any of these three, so it has to be a non-essential. Does that make sense in context? Yes, it does. She leaned over the Petri dish, her face illuminated by an aquamarine glow, okay? So with these questions, you want to jump into them from the right spot. Start with rules, which is the independent clause stuff, which comes from semicolons. Those are more obvious than go to colons. Then I, I started with and with no commas. You could do the comma ones. It doesn't matter as long as the semicolon sort of orients you where, with where they're saying you should be figuring out independent clauses, where the, the break is between these two pieces. Okay, questions here? Let me know. I will start looking at the next one. Give you some time. No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> Fishery, what is that word? Okay. 
All right, number 49. Also, uh, Eric, if you have other questions, please ask, because these are, these are you know, straight CB turtle questions, which is cool, and you're learning too, so that's fine, but if you have 48, uh, 48. Yeah, okay, so let's start with 48 then. Oh, there we go, okay. So just looking at the answer choices, in 48, what are we being uh, tested on? Clearly apostrophes, and then, and then the necessity, and then we have and there. So there's two, clearly apostrophes are happening, and then we also have more information. So one of the things when you're recognizing what you're being tested on is seeing, do you have more information and less information as you go between answer choices? And we do. We have, we've added in and there. Why would we do that? Maybe we need it, maybe we don't. So we have, as, as a student in graduate school, Bassler became intrigued with others, with other researchers and their discoveries involving Vibrio Fischeri. Great. Um, what is she? So we want apostrophes. So let's look at, let's ignore and there because that's a little confusing to add in right away. Um, let's start with H. With other researchers' discoveries involving this stuff. That looks pretty good because the difference between H and J is ownership. Do we want ownership? J is just straight researchers. So that would be with other researchers, discoveries. I think we would want the discoveries of those researchers, right? Yes, so I agree with you, Eric. It should be H, not J, because you want the, disco you want the researchers to have those discoveries. Yeah, you don't want just two nouns just next to each other with no relationship between them. So H, I like more than J. Now we need to consider... Um, do we want and there? I would argue no, because Bassler is intrigued with these vibre, vibrio, vibrio vicheri, right? That's what she, she cares about. Um, and therefore, it's the researchers' discoveries about those. If you say she's fascinated with the researchers and their discoveries, that might sound like she's interested in the researchers as people and the discoveries that they made. She doesn't care about them as people. She cares about their discoveries, right? So you want that ownership. And actually, F and G both have um, apostrophes. I'm, I would think that there are multiple researchers. So G doesn't work because that says, you would need to say another researchers because an other, you want to make it singular. So G is the wrong um, number of researchers before you even do um, possessive. And then why would you say and there? You're already talking about their discoveries when you say research researchers' discoveries. Um, does that make sense in 48? Yeah, HS, I'll get to that in a sec. Dude. Bird. Yes. Would you like to do... 49 while I just check. Well, I'll, I'll do 49 and then I'll get to your your questions, Ace. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying when you got here, Chesky. Good, cool. Okay, so 49 and then we'll, we'll hit those couple of questions. Um, 49B, we'll see. Let's look at the... We're going to do recognition again because that's what I, I want you to always do. Um, how... I have a, an honest question for you. So I always check the answer choices first, especially in the English section, to see what I'm being tested on. Is that helpful that I'm doing that first on stream? Because I think it's important to do when you're taking the tests. I think it's important. I think you should do it. But is it just a waste of your time to have me do those things so you know it every single time? Or is it helpful? Answer that question, but I'm going to actually do that here. Um, Okay, so looking at the answer choices, we have a comma in C, where we don't have commas in the other others, and then we also have which is. That adds in other parts of speech, right? It's, it's not exactly that there's... More, good, okay, good. There's more information. Uh, sorry, there's not more information. You're not saying Fisheri and um, Brady went to the school. You're not adding other stuff. But you're adding in different parts of speech. And then also in A, you have a semicolon. 
So again, yes, how do you know what to look for when reading around it? Um, you're looking for differences. So I, I try to identify the differences between the answer choices because that's what you're deciding on what to do, right? So between B and C, B, between C and D, you have a comma. So we're going to have to think about commas in this question. And then, sorry, C and D is that. And then B has which is. So we've added in more words and they're, they're important parts of speech, right? Which is, that's, that's important. That can change the whole thrust of a sentence. And then A has a semicolon. Okay, that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with the semicolon because it's by far the easiest. So let's start there. We need to have independent clause, independent clause. Uh, so the first part of the sentence, we have Bassler became intrigued with others' research, with other researchers' discoveries involving the Bray of Fischeri. That's an independent clause. We have Bassler became intrigued. Great. And then do we have it after? We have a luminescent marine bacteria. Nope. There's no verb. So I don't like A, and then we have B, C, and D. Okay, do we want to have B, which is, ah, okay, this is, this is tough, actually. What was your answer here? Eric, you said B. Hmm, okay, it's not D. Right? I think you should probably recognize that this last piece, which is a luminescent marine bacteria, yeah, a luminescent marine bacteria, that's not part of the main independent clause, right? That's describing Vibreo fischeri. <laughs> they're doing chess ratings right now. Chesky and Ace Chess. Doing what? They're, talking, they're like exchanging what their chess ratings are. Oh, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, oh, I mean C. Okay, yes, C is the correct answer. You use a comma to offset that non-essential. Good. Now, B would be fine if you have a comma. If you have a comma before which, then it's still a non-essential, and you can have which is, a bio, which is a luminescent marine bacteria, or you could just say a luminescent marine bacteria. Either works but you have to offset that non-essential the correct way, which is, isn't good enough. That won't offset it. You need the comma itself. Yeah. Or a dash or parentheses around the whole thing. Good. Okay. Ace chess. I'm glad you found a friend. Um, let's do your questions real quick. Um, I will be in the bathroom. <laughs> okay. I will be in the bathroom. That one? No. That one. No. I mean, behind you. No, I don't do that one. Why? Can you do the, the other one? No. Okay. Um. Hey. Ace Chess, um, if... Not sure what's happening. Um, I'm going to answer your questions real quick. The ones that are related to the SAT and ACT, Ace Chess, you got them correct. So, guys, I'm, I'm gonna, this, is, this is actually more of what we've talked about with commas, so I'm going to say this again. Your first question, um, you got it right. That absolute phrase, that's a, that's a non-essential. That's what, that's, one of the types of non-essentials are absolute phrases, and that's something that you just put on the end or at the beginning or somewhere that describes a noun in your sentence, okay? So in this sentence that you have, we have, um, piping hot and spicy, the aroma of food. Actually, this is not even correct grammar anyway. Pipe, piping hot and spicy, the aroma filled the kitchen. Okay, 
And the question was, or the request was, identify the absolute phrase. You said piping hot and spicy. That is the absolute phrase. That's the non-essential. It is describing, incorrectly, by the way, this, this, this sentence is grammatically incorrect. Okay? That's not what the question is asking, but whoever made this isn't right. Because this is a non-essential. Non-essentials have to describe the thing that comes right before or right after, depending. So it has to describe the noun right here, which is the aroma. Now, I, I didn't write the aroma of food, but aroma is not piping hot and spicy. Food is piping hot and spicy. So you can't say piping hot and spicy, the aroma of food filled the kitchen. That doesn't make sense. An absolute phrase, put it out of your head. It doesn't exist, Eric. Don't, don't worry about it. It's in the question that I was asked. It is a type of non-essential. Don't, it just doesn't help you in your life to know what that means. My guess is it does with, um, Ace chess, but it doesn't with you, so ignore it. Um, so that's this one, okay? If you have any questions, let me know. But this is your absolute phrase, which you got right. Non-essential, describes the thing next to it. That doesn't make any sense, so you would have to say the food, you know, piping hot and spicy, the food gave off a smell that filled the kitchen. Something like that, because then you're saying the food and describing it with hot and spicy. Uh, Next one, um, yeah, I'm just going to answer these really quick. Everybody else, ignore what I'm about to say because it, it won't help you. Um, I'm going to finish this real quick. Uh, select the option that uses the correct subordinate conjunction. I got a new puppy. I've been responsible lately. Yes, you picked the right one. It's fourth. I got a new puppy because. You would say because. You, you've been responsible, so you get a new puppy. You would not say if. Why would, that doesn't correct... Uh, connect them correctly. You also have, I got a new puppy, comma, I have been responsible lately. That's two independent clauses separated by a comma. There's no coordinating conjunction there, or subordinate conjunction there. So there's, it's not even grammatically correct, nor does it relate the sentences in, in, in any way anyway. Last one, and then we'll move back to the other questions. Also, if you guys have any math questions, ask those, because we've been doing a lot of English and Brady's getting sad, is my guess. He's done in the bathroom, though, which is good. He's, he'll be out here soon, I'm sure. Okay. Um, and then, okay, so this is word choice stuff. The, the third or fourth question, third question, is select a trait that is associated with descriptive writing. So this is actually what I was going to talk about today. And actually might be a good transition into one of the questions I want to ask, and then I'll erase this, do that question. It says... Um, Pick the choice, select a trait associated with descriptive writing. And then you have interesting word choice, strong plot structure, complex conflicts, and surprise endings. You said pick the second option. No. The second option was strong plot structure. The first option is interesting word choice. Interesting word choice supports descriptive writing. So that's what you want more. Okay. I'm going to erase this and I'm going to pull up the overlay. I want to talk about this, uh, direction questions. So. You guys, you know, we, we do a lot of content stuff, but that's why the reason why I like to point out um, the question types that you're dealing with is that some of those question types require a very specific approach. Can you help me erase? Yes. Um, and also, I was wondering what that thing is in the corner. What thing? Um, of the screen. Oh, that's a great question. I thought so. Um, this bird is Alta Ipsum. I would think you'd remember that since you advertise for them on a tri a tertiary weekly basis. Tertiary weekly basis? No, that's no, not a thing. Not at all. I'm sure it's bi-weekly. It's not bi-weekly. Tri-weekly. You're talking about like three days a week? Yeah. Oh. Tri-weekly. That's, that's what it is. Uh, could you go through, have you talked about this? There are so many questions. Yeah, that would take a while. That's 58 questions, Eric. You, you've got to got to give us some specifics because we can't. That would be an entire stream. Um, <laughs> that would be so much more. Than we an appreciate stream. the enthusiasm, though. We will very slowly. We can do that. Anyway, in the corner we have Alta Ipsum, which loosely translated from Latin means summit yourself like a mountain. You know, get to the top of yourself. Levi, 
Did you know that Alta Ipsum was an online on your phone and computer application that lets you schedule your <laughs> academic calendar, track your grades, make goals, track your goals, and generally outsource all of your mental executive functioning to the app? You know what? I, I thought I knew, but I didn't quite fully appreciate until I downloaded the app, made an account, and made use of it for a month for free. Wait, it's available for free for a month? It is free for a month. And it was free for last month, but you missed that month. Oh, so there's been a bunch of free months that I've missed? Yes, so as soon as you start, that will be your free month. And then the, the month after that, it'll cost. But right. not, not a lot. No. Yeah. Ace, uh, we do not do streams for random English questions. It's only SAT and ACT. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. If these are concepts that are related to the SAT and ACT, like if you're just asking randomly semicolons, well, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. You want to talk about semicolons? We can talk about semicolons. Anyway, that's all to answer. Anyway. Answer. And then there's Accelerate Tutoring, which is Levi and I. We yes. tutor. Yes. For Levi and me. It's okay. I, there's no learning for me. No. Don't know. No. no. Like I have no... This is so ingrained in me. Yes. It's like too late for me to change. Yeah. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. All right, let me try this. Uh, Accelerate Tutoring is Levi and me. Yes. Yes, that's what it is. And Brady and I are Accelerate Tutoring. Correct. Um, can you grab the Typhon Wood Glue? Uh, yes. We're also sponsored by Typhon Wood Glue because Levi and I have a Type Bond. Bond. They pay us about as much as you pay us for this stream. Which is nothing. Um, so Ace, we by like not doing streams for that stuff, we're, we're not going to spend time answering those questions because we want to do questions that will help everybody for these tests, specifically these tests. OK. So um, Eric, if you, so it seems like you want uh, you know, an overall math thing. What I would recommend for overall math stuff is to do Khan Academy and then specific concepts where you want practice and you've done practice and you still don't understand specific questions, come to us with those questions. But we're not going to go through just an entire enormous test of 58 math questions. Um, OK, so it, yeah, so pick out maybe one or two, and then we'll do those. You know, pick out the specific ones. Um, I feel like this, I hope it's not too hypocritical because um, CB Turtle, you know, posted eight English questions, but feel free to post eight math questions. We will do them. Just like we're not going to go through an entire test question by question necessarily. Because it, it won't help you that much. It really won't. It will help you more if you're spending your time doing that yourself, trying to figure out those things, and then the hardest things for you that you're just not getting or for whatever reason it's not clicking in your brain, we'll talk about those things because then you can have, make more use of us. More targeted use. Okay, let's, uh, yeah, so throw some math questions at us, but until we, we get any of those, I'll just keep doing English ones, which is just fine with me. CB Turtle, are you here? Say hello. What is a group of turtles called? Can you look that up? Yes. What about the last It is five? called a bale, B-A-L-E. A bale of turtles. <laughs> So Christian Bale is a group of religiously Christian turtles. Right? Ah. Okay. Give it back. I can't. You stole it. It hit me and it fell on the floor. Give it back. No, 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 no. Theft has nothing to do with violently thrown projectiles. We don't condone violence. We don't. Brady does. No. CB Turtle, let's do number 50. We have... Ace, hey, yeah, I looked at all your questions. Um, okay. Once the bacteria have released a high... In, okay, sorry. What am I doing? Huge mistake. I'm embarrassed. Got to look at the answer choices first. See what we're being tested on. Okay. Would have allowed, has allowed, allows, and... Allowed, I assume. It doesn't seem underlined for whatever reason, but that's fine. Okay. So... Let's talk about these. Allowed, would have allowed, has allowed, would have allowed, 
has allowed and allows. Couple things going on here. We certainly have tense, right? Because we have allowed, we have has allowed, sorry, allowed versus allows, right? Those are different tenses. Purvis, what's up? Um, sine, uh, I don't know, I forget what, hey, bird. Yes. Two sine x, cosine x, what does that simplify to? Sine of 2x. Sine of 2x, there you go, get out of here. Um, no, ask more questions, hi, Purvis, it's good to see you. Okay, so we're definitely doing tense, but we're also doing subject verb agreement. <coughs> Why are we doing that? Because we have allows, which is singular, or it's for a singular verb. Nope, it's for a singular subject. He allows, right? You'd say he allows, you would not say they allows. But here, yeah, so we have to think about that. Um, unless they're all possibly singular. No, they're all possibly singular. So, well, let, let's consider it. Let's just consider it. Just had a test on that today. Oh, great, lovely. Yeah, you're never going to have to know that identity. For, is that an identity bird or is that yes. a... Yeah, you don't have to know identities for the test. It would be helpful to know sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. Yes, and tan is sine over cosine. And tan is sine over cosine, but other than that, I don't think there's much you need to definitely know. Um, so, for these things... For tense, you need to look at the verbs around your verb. Not necessarily in your sentence, but what about the verbs in the other sentences? That will situate you in what point in time your passage is, or your paragraph at least, and then you can decide on what tense you want. And then we also have subject-verb agreement. You need to figure out what your verb is. Sorry, you need to figure out what your subject is so you can match your verb to that specific subject. So we have a sensory pro protein what? A sensory protein allowed other bacteria to hear this molecular message. Once the bacteria have released a high enough concentration of autoducer, they assemble and begin to grow. Okay. The tense is present. Why would I write tense again? To waste time, I guess. Don't waste time. Present tense. Now, I read a lot of these sentences. Purvis, it's important to watch stream during your test. That's true. Yeah. Not that we can help, because we don't stream during your test. Yes. Never will. You can't make us. You can make Brady. Hey, Bert, come up here. I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. We have present tense. What I found was... Um, Actually, a little while later, they assemble and begin to grow. That's all present tense. There's other tensey type stuff going on, but it's hard to get a grasp on it. Um, we also have this quorum sensing enables the bacteria to coordinate. Um, yes, yeah, let your teacher know. We'll, we'll talk to your teacher. You wish to speak to me, my lord. Who does? You do. Me? Yes. I wanted you to speak to them. I don't want to talk to you. What do you want me to say to them? I want you to say... I want you to... Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Okay. So present tense is what we want to, to stay in keeping with the rest of this paragraph. If you were able to take the SAT, ACT now, what do you think we would, we would get? Um, like around a 1600. For sure. Like definitely around a 1600. Simple mistakes happen and I don't like taking the SAT. Mm. Neither do you. Yes. But uh, we've been doing this for several years now, so like we know everything that's on the test. Yeah. We don't have, have an excuse. So if you want to get you know close to a perfect score, I would recommend dropping out of high school, becoming a full-time tutor, and waiting five years. And, or not waiting, but tutoring for five years. And then take the SAT and then go to college. Yeah, that's good. That way you'll get the, the normal experience for, for young Americans. Yeah, because you'll be, you know, 23 right. with a bunch of 18-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fun. Yeah. Uncle Bill. That's actually what Uncle Bill did. Yes, Uncle Bill also taught me how to throw a pigskin. 
<laughs> a quarter mile, actually. Yeah. That's very far, Bird. Uncle Bill taught me. What do you want? I don't know. I, I guess I want that, too. He but... taught me. Uncle Bill just always treated you more like a son than he treated me, and I'm his son. And I'm his nephew. Yeah. And he uh... makes me call him uncle. <laughs> That's always weirded me out. <laughs> okay. So this one, we need present tense. This one is taking a long time. Which means we don't want this, and we don't want this, and we don't want this. So, whoop. <laughs> Uncle Bill. Age 85 tonight. It's never too late, Uncle Bill. Never it's too late. never too late. As soon as you enter college, you actually start again at 18. Yeah. So I would actually worry about that. If you didn't like the last 38 years... 37, yes. ooh, 37 years. Well, Uncle Bill, you're, you're watching this, so clearly you're gearing up to go to college. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to make you feel, I don't know, like, you're, you know, you're not the only one here. Um, my grandma actually went to college when she was 17. Yeah. She, she, <laughs> she's, they had her skip a couple grades. <laughs> uh, that definitely helped. Yeah, it did. Sure. It got her there quick. But she didn't know a lot of things. That an 18-year-old girl in college would she know. She probably knew nothing about phones. She knew very little, yeah. Um, she, yes, she knew nothing about... Well, they had phones then, just no, not... Didn't. Right, right. How old do you think my grandma is? I don't know. Um, well, she's old enough that they had phones when she was young. Don't worry, they just didn't have cell phones. You know what they call them cell phones? Um, do you? Yes. Did you know? Yeah, cellular... Telephones? Right. Well, cellular. Why is it called cellular? Um, because they... I don't know, actually. <laughs> do, you, do you? Yes, I do. Okay, I thought you meant cell to cellular. Is that the... No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Okay, so you've got... You've got these cell towers. Wow, this is not going to be a great cell tower. They, oh, my gosh. Okay. And you've got another cell tower over here. So... When your phone is close to a certain cell tower, that's the signal it's going to go to. And as you get closer and closer to a different cell tower, your signal is going to start transferring over that. So what this is going to create on the landscape is a bunch of cellular hexagons between the cell towers. Why hexagons? Because that is the right shape to have when you get cell towers. Why? Well, you know, because that's just sort of what happens. They, that's how they organize them. Um, that's just ends up, that's what ends up happening. I mean, if you think about just having three, you're going to have this triangular thing here, right? No. You're going to, no, you're going to put lines that are equidistant between these things. What do you mean by lines? The borders between cells. We're looking at a sky view of okay. land. You know, what, you know what this is. You're just giving me a hard time. I never give you a hard time. Pretty. Yes, you always give me a hard time. I literally you never, literally give, you never give you a soft time. time. You, you only give, me give me a hard time a soft when time. you're being hyperbolic. Hyperbolic. Hyperbola. Ebola. Well, actually, hyperbola is uh, now sweeping the nation. This is probably insensitive. Yeah, it's, yeah. And it's not. It's, it's yeah. measles, anyway. Um, measles. <laughs> yeah, sure, measles. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what they call them, cell phones. Hexagons stack the grid most efficiently. efficiently. That, that is why that a honeycomb is uh, that, that, that shape. Are you sure you didn't go to honeycomb school, Uncle Bill? Uncle Bill, you're a druid. What do you know about honeycombs? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's a very efficient use of space. That, that's why. That's why. My grandpa. <laughs> we're, oh, sorry we're, sorry we're sorry to hear that. We're sorry to hear that. We're sorry to hear that. What? My, my mom and my dad were talking this weekend. About I what? Talking. Well, I will tell you. I'm about to tell you. Okay. Um, and my dad said, uh, John, something died. And my mom said, oh, Digger. I'm sure he did a good job at his funeral. And I was like... What are you saying, Mom? His last name is Digger? No. He was a digger? No. He worked. He, he was a mortician before he died, so my mom's immediate response was he probably did a good job at his own funeral, and she called him Digger, which is what she called him when they knew each other. <laughs> oh, jeez. Your mom. Yeah. Sometimes I, I wish that um, I could fly. It's not related. That's what we call a non sequitur. But I do wish that. But not all the time. There are plenty of times where I'm like glad I can't fly. A yeah. non sequitur. Doesn't Another non sequitur. Doesn't sequitur. Not to be confused with flatbread sequiturs. Hey, we don't condone violence. Don't condone violence. You don't condone what? <laughs> violence. Violence. Hey, um, we hope your grandma's okay.
right. Uh, um, sure. We, yeah. Right. You know what? What? It's possible that other questions got asked in the Discord, but also there haven't been, so it's impossible. El Discord. Right? Yes. As in, ask me a question on El Discord. Can I have the language of origin? Hey, Spanish. CB Turtle, it seems, based on these questions that you've sent us, can you please do a 24-hour stream one day before May 4th? Which day would it be? Because you wouldn't be able to... Are you going to be on spring break or something? No. No, 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 no. You, you have to be constantly going back and forth between the questions and the text, because what your job is is to find textual evidence to back up the answers that you pick. You can and you should go back to it to find the, the areas that the answers to the question will be found in. I will be here at least 98% of the time. That's a lot of the time. 24 hour stream would be wild. If you get your friends to watch, we'll stream more. Yeah. It That's actually valid. Yeah. It has to be a lot of friends, though. Yeah. What time is it? You got, this is three minutes fast. Oh, oh, okay. Why do you keep your watch three minutes fast? Um, to upset you. What are you? What do I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. We don't know about this. We don't. Like a Friday at 5 p.m. to Saturday. Well, the, the test is on Saturday. So I'm not sure if 5 p.m. Friday to 5 p.m. Saturday wouldn't make sense because then you'd be taking the test Saturday morning. I think unless you're somewhere else. I'm introverted mostly. Okay, so a couple very close friends, but not a wide swath yeah. of them. Also, if you're, it's a good thing it's only most, because if you're entirely introverted, then you kind of just end up being extroverted <laughs> and entirely inside out, which is incredibly painful. Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. your, your body uh, contracts to uh, a, a volume that is so small that the force of gravity is so strong that not even light can escape. Right. If you're completely introverted. Right. But so many, so, so few people yeah. are, yeah. are so not completely introverted. You know, they're like at least half a percent introverted. Yeah. Otherwise, this whole world would be just black holes sucking things in. Did I tell you about... No. Hey. <laughs> okay. Um, Eric. I'm not, it seems like you stand on the, in the camp of, I'm not super comfortable with math. So, do Khan Academy. If you're here 98% of the time, awesome. Um, question, are you here 98% of the time when we're streaming, or are you here 98% of the time all the time? Because that's super useless for, like, 85 to 98% of the time we're not on. Math is impossible. That's true. Believe that. Right, Braid? Math is impossible. No. Ah. <laughs> we can do more math stuff. Um, uh, the thing, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I recommend Khan Academy. You can, you can get a fuller math background with that <coughs> interesting choice i have to take a one-year course in four weeks in the summer because i don't want to do i don't want to be bad at math anymore okay um careful about condensing time um and its relativity to space also yeah, I would recommend prepping for that four-week course as much as possible because four weeks is still, it's going to be hard. Is there an essay? Oh, yeah, Eric. Eric. Eric, 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 Eric. There is so much prep on Khan Academy for the SAT. You should definitely do it. What we're doing is not necessarily let's get you ready for everything on the SAT. It's more of a this question type, let's approach it this way, and then we can explain concepts that are hard and you need to ask questions because Khan Academy is all pre-recorded, right? So if you watch a video, you don't get it, then come here and, and work with us. But yeah, it, it, there are explanation videos and tons of stuff, not on test questions specifically, but then you can take the tests, they have answer explanations, things like that. I would recommend using Khan Academy as much as possible. Maybe like 90% of the time, 
be on Khan Academy and then the other percent of the time be watching us because we're only doing three an hour and a half, three days a week. Um, let's do, okay, uh, we're, uh, CB, CB Turtle. The questions that you posted in the Discord, of the eight of them, did my computer die? No, it did not. I'm looking at 65 right now. A lot of these ones that you circled have to do with independent clause separation because many of them have had semicolons, right? And that, so that's what you're dealing with each time. And I think it's, it's whatever um, balancing act you, ha you have to make between you know, independent clause, independent clause, or having non-essentials. I think that's where your struggle is. I think that the way you approach the questions can help with that enormously. You know the uses of semicolons, you know the uses of col colons, you know, what did I say? You know the uses of commas, all that stuff. So now hop into these questions at the semicolon point. That should be useful. So number 65, you have a semicolon. Identify if you have two independent clauses on either side. If you do, cool, it's probably the right answer or you made a mistake, but let's go with the right answer most likely. Look at the other question choice, the answer choices, and see, do those also correctly separate independent clause stuff? Okay, so number 65, semicolon is an A, so let's just read this sentence. More, sty more a stylistic outline of roots besides, uh, um, okay, 64 is G, so that, that would help. More a stylistic outline of the roots than a true to life sketch. That is not an independent clause. So semicolon doesn't work. Period doesn't work. Comma and probably doesn't work because that's comma fanboys. So C is probably going to be the answer because you don't have two independent clauses and that's just a comma so that should be okay. Let's read that. More a stylistic outline of roots than a true to life sketch. It did not represent actual distances between points. Yes, that would be the answer. Okay, so this is does that make sense, CB Turtle? Are you here, CB Turtle? Also, that would be helpful. Would not be helpful if you're not. If you're not, that's fine. Yes, very good, cool. Um, so, uh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Very good, glad you're here. Makes sense, awesome. So, based on what we talked about today and what we talked about in the past, what do you what do you guys think that are watching right now is the issue with these things is it that you're you're just not looking at the things that i'm looking at when i do the questions like i understand that i i do this all the time and so i know that i'm i miss things that you guys are missing i'm trying to pick up on what the specific um mistakes are that you make how you make your mistakes and generally the correct approach to each of these questions and a very systematic one that you're conscious of will eliminate a lot of those mistakes that I can't necessarily sense because I'm not you know, sitting in a room with you watching you do a question. Um, so you want to start with semicolons because they're easier. And then now you know, okay, well at this point in the sentence, I'm being tested on where independent clauses are. So if I have two, great, semicolon should work. If I, but then I have to be wary. You know, if I have a semicolon and then the word and, that wouldn't make sense because and you know, would be added onto an independent clause wouldn't make sense to start there. So you have to think about those types of things and you have commas and colons thrown in the mix. I hope that makes sense. I do not mean to ramble, but please let me know if you're, if you're able to start, I want you to start um, identifying question types. Uh, okay, so hard time figuring out independent clauses, I guess. I only missed nine and sent eight to Discord. So if I perfect this, then hopefully um, just so you know, then, it should have been then, it should be T-H-E-N, just so you know, um, then hopefully I can get a much higher score. Yes, I totally agree. I get confused in the IC and how to separate sometimes. Okay, good. So you, you got to know those four ways. Periods, very easy, right? Semicolons, also just like a period. Colons, you need an independent clause. You can have whatever you want afterwards, but it could also be an independent clause. So that is one of the four ways to separate. And then comma fanboys. Those are the only four ways to separate. But I, yes, the hard thing is knowing if it's an independent clause because you are looking for a subject and verb and most of the time, if you have those, you're good. But as we've talked about before, I walk to school. If we have this, that's great. But if we say, as I walk to school, this is no longer an independent clause. So you have to be aware of this type of thing. 
make sure and and to be very very specific about it get rid of everything i think people are trying to do these questions all at once and come up with the right answer the, you are not trying to come up with the right answer in the math you're trying to get to the right answer almost always but in the english in the reading in the science in the well, not as much in science but english and reading for sure and then same thing on the on the um, writing and, and reading for the sat um, you're trying to eliminate answers so you don't have to do everything at once you don't have to get the right answer you need to say okay i'm looking at answer choice a and it has a semicolon so i'm going to check independent clause now i'm going to ignore everything around me and just look at this phrase specifically do i have a subject and verb can this com stand alone as a complete thought if it does great first i see is good then you go to the next one can you actually do like a full sat stream going through it together um yeah yeah I, I, feasibly yes it would just take an enormous amount of time um <sighs> Maybe. I will talk to Brady about it. Um, the, the, I don't know, to be honest. The going through a test is fine, but I'd be going, I'd be approaching it my way, but I am teaching you my way of approaching these questions. I'm not just teaching you this because this is a good way to teach it. I'm teaching you this because I think this is the most effective way to take the test. Um, yeah, break it into sections, sure. But me, you know, if you're, if I have 20 people watching, which isn't the case ever, right? Or most of the time, but a couple people watching, I've already taught you how I approach each of these question types and maybe seeing me do it 10 times in the service of all these, you know, as I go through a test would help, but you know the approach and then I'm just, I'm not making the mistakes that you're making most of the time, right? So I think time efficiency wise, it makes more sense for you guys to do tests, figure out what you're getting wrong, figure out why you got it wrong. And then those questions you got wrong, bring them to me and then I will go through the approach for that type of question and that question specifically if you have a picture of it. And that way we're not wasting time on questions that you know how to do. Uh, but I, I, I see the, the, the value in going through a full test. I do. It's just, I don't know if that value is worth the time that, I don't know. I'll talk to Brady about it. Um, but yeah, CB Turtle, you're, you're right. Yeah, you want to figure out this IC stuff. It's the most important thing, and it's really, really common. So... Um, once, once you have that down, great. What I would recommend, CB Turtle, if you have access to more tests, or, sorry, these were, these were ACT questions. You could do SAT questions too. They're, they're more or less the same. The writing section on the SAT is pretty similar. So if you haven't done SAT sections, um, you can do those. And what I would do is if you're, if you're practicing a specific question type, you don't have to do the whole test. You don't have to do the whole section. Just look through. So if you're doing the ACT, you're not taking the SAT, just do an SAT and vice versa, um, and go through all the answer choices and look, okay, where am I being tested on this thing? So you're practicing recognition. So this is what I would recommend, going through and identifying every single question type for every question, right? And when you hit a question, so just identify stuff so you know how to see what's going on very quickly. And then when you get to something with semicolons or periods or colons or adding in, um, comma and or adding in I was when the other answer choices don't have I or don't have was so you're adding in a subject and or a verb or periods or semicolons that type of thing you know you're dealing with sentence structure and independent clauses so that ident you've identified that now do that question and then hop back out and identify 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 you hit another one of those do that question okay so that way you're practicing and you're not wasting a test really on that um, and you're just doing the other sides test SAT versus ACT is that understandable? I know you already said understandable, but is what I just said understandable? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, give that a shot. It allows you to, to hammer a, per, a particular question type. It works best in the English slash writing sections because they're very, very similar. The math sections are sort of similar. The reading, not so much, aside from some question types. Um, and then science is just on the ACT. Um, but 
the so what what I recommend for studying is is not using us for learning all of the concepts you need to learn. Use Khan Academy for that. Use other other things where that time has already been spent and you can do it on your own time. This time should be for things that you are really not good at, specifically not good at, and you've tried to learn them on your own because Khan Academy is free, so do it. Um, tried to learn them, it's not working, so we'll do those concepts and then specific approaches to specific question types. But I, it's, it's on you guys as much as possible to identify what those question types are because I can't do that for you. Although I just did in this case, but like you probably knew that already. Um, maybe not super consciously. I don't know. I'm definitely rambling. Um, but yeah, any more questions, put them in the Discord. We'll be back tomorrow and the next day. Have a good night, everybody. Oh, I'm going to have some chocolate and go to sleep, probably. Night.